today, we're, as you might have guessed, we're gonna need a chair. So yeah, if you've got a chair nearby, grab it and put it on the mat. Um, if you don't have a mat or if the surface is a little bit slippery, you might want to have the chair against a wall or against a, a big piece of furniture so that you're sure that the chair is not going to go away as we lean our weight into it. And we're going to start standing. So I'm guessing uh, we might have spent the day sitting, so it would be nice to stand a little bit. So we can keep our feet hip distance apart and ground the feet down, bend the knees slightly, tuck the tailbone, lift the chest, relax the shoulders and relax the arms alongside the body and lift the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. So a simple standing position, but you're trying to pay attention to your posture here. Making sure the body weight is in the left foot as well as the right foot, so just evenly distributed. And that you're not leaning too far back onto the heels or too far forward, too far forward on the toes. And then just keep breathing here. So taking a few deep breaths, you can close the eyes, taking a few deep arrival breaths, sending the air all the way down to the to the low ribs and to the abdomen and maybe exhaling through the mouth and again deep inhale and long exhale and we'll take one last breath here And a long exhale. And just keep a normal breath now. Just bring your awareness all, uh, all around the body, from the head to the toes. Keeping the eyes closed and the body still. Just feeling into the body. Noticing if you have any tension, if you're holding any tension, maybe in the fingers or in the shoulders, in the legs, or anywhere on the face. Relaxing the forehead and the cheeks and the jaw and the eyes. And from here we'll ground the toes, the feet down and lift the arms up towards the ceiling, stretching up. And then exhale, let's bring the hands in front of the chest in a prayer position. Bow the head towards the hands, open the eyes. Namaste. Very good. All right, let's relax the arms alongside the body. And we'll start with some movement with the neck. So we just bring the head towards the right and back to center and turn the head towards the left and back to center. And you can do that a couple of times. So you don't want to move in a way that makes you sore, that, makes, that hurts. You just want to find the point where you feel a little tension and then you go a little bit past this but not too much, never to the point of pain. Just feeling a bit of stretch in the side of the neck and moving with the breath and you can keep the eyes closed. And then we'll take one more Finishing with the head towards the left. And then back to center. And we'll do the same thing that we're leaning the head towards the right shoulder. Come back up and lead the head towards the left shoulder. So the shoulders stay relaxed away from the ears. You're 
only the head moves. We'll do some more, still moving with the breath. And last one towards the left. Just finish your cycle and then come back up. And then we'll do some neck roll. So chin down, rolling the head towards the right. Let the right ear is on top of the right shoulder. And then leaning the head all the way to the left. Moving slow and being mindful. For the last few rounds, if you want to take full circles, leaning the head towards the back, but be very gentle, very mindful, and then rolling the head all the way to the left. Always controlling the movement. And then coming back to center. And lifting, lifting the chin up. Now we'll do some shoulder rolls. So we roll the shoulders back and then we roll the shoulders forward. And you can pace from side to side if you want here. Again, some movement in the legs as well. So we're starting this class with just a little bit of a full body stretch, total body stretch and warming up. And then we'll move on to gentle inversions. So we'll be using the chair, obviously, to move into our relaxing inversion practice. And it should feel really nice. We'll do it. A couple more rounds. And you want to finish with a roll back. So rolling the shoulders back and relaxing. Good, we'll move on to the wrists and the still shoulders as well. So as we inhale, we bring the arms up forward and bring the fingers towards the face here. So your arms are straight and you're flexing, no, extending the wrists so that the fingers come towards you. On the exhale, we'll bring the arms back, all the way back, and again, we flex the wrist this time so that the fingers come towards your forearms. Inhale forward. Exhale back, move with your own breath and really reaching the arms up as well as you go back so that you feel it in the front of the shoulders and here when you come to the front you're really pushing forward so that you feel it on the outside of the shoulders. So a little bit of muscle activation here as well as a stretch. Just do one more. And then relax. Good. We'll find uh, some movement in the torso now. So you can bring the arms forward, keep a slight bend in the knees and the hips facing forward, quite steady. And then we turn the shoulders towards the right, all the spine turns towards the right, and then going towards the left. And you continue like this, moving with your own breath. And you can be very slow, very mindful, really trying to find a stretch all along the spine and all along the front of the body. Make sure that you're not moving the hips with the rest of the torso. So your hips keep facing forward. Nice steady breath. Do a couple more. And so if you start it on the right, ending on the left and coming back to center. Good. Let's do another one that feels really nice. So exhale and bring the arms forward and round the upper back, stretching the rhomboids between the shoulder blades. 
You can tuck the chin towards the chest and inhale, open the chest, bring the arms back. And again, you can find a little stretch in the wrists here. Exhale, rounding the upper spine, reaching the arms forward. Inhale, lifting the chest, fingers pointing back. Exhale. And inhale. Lift the gaze, finding a little stretch in the throat as well. Let's do two more. And we finish with an open chest. And then relax. Good. Really feels good opening the chest, especially if you work at a computer. So let's go to the side body. So we're gonna lift the right arm up and turn the palm to face the ceiling. So the thumb is pointing forwards. So you've got a bit of a rotation in the shoulders here. Inhale here and exhale, lean towards the right, towards the left, sorry. Inhale, come back up and lift the other arm up, turn the palm to face the ceiling. Exhale, lean to the right this time. Inhale up and change. Exhale, lean. Inhale up. Exhale, lean. Inhale up, exhale in. Again, moving with your breath and making sure you're still on the same plane so that you're not folding forward or leaning too far back. You just want to feel it in the side of the body here. And in. And last one on the left. And come back up and raise both hands up now and interlace the fingers uh, apart from the index fingers reaching up in hell and exhale lean to the right and this time we're holding here so you're reaching the fingers away from you keeping the shoulders relaxed and maybe pushing the hips a little bit to the left so that you really feel a good good stretch to the whole side body it's a little bit tiring for the shoulders not staying here long and inhale come back to center and let's do the other side leaning to the left pushing the hips to the right stretching the arms overhead keep the breath flowing and inhale coming back up and exhale, releasing the arms. Very good, shake the shoulders if you need to. Good, let's move on to the pods. So you might use your chair here actually. You can hold on to the chair and bend the right foot so that you get the foot coming towards your bum. And you can just pull the foot closer to the bum, letting, allowing the knee to go back, but not to go to the side, right? So we're trying to keep the knee, the right knee close to the left leg. And if you want to challenge your balance a bit today, you can just place your hand on your hip and not on the chair. So here you can push the hip forward slightly as well, bring the right knee back so that you really get this nice sensation in the front of the leg. Nice or intense? Whoa! <laughs> All right. Keep the shoulders relaxed and breathe. Let's change legs. Relax your right foot down and bring the left foot into your hand, holding onto the chair if you need to, reaching the left knee down and back. Keep hugging the left leg towards the midline. Lift the chest, make sure that you're still standing upright. The shoulders are down. And you can just breathe, close the eyes, and focus on the sensation. Beautiful.
go. Let's slowly relax, bring the left foot back down. And before we start really using our chair, we'll do some hip circles just to warm up the hips. So the feet are still hip distance apart or even a little bit wider and we'll just draw some circles with the hips. So moving the hips to the side, to the front, to the right and to the back. And making sure you're not just moving the torso here, sometimes I see this, it's more like shoulder spine circles. So here we're really moving the pelvis and the torso stays relatively still. And again, it's a good time to close the eyes and just notice where you're feeling the movement. Where are you feeling the sensation? And can you draw some perfect circles here? Or is, is there some point where it gets stuck? <laughs> Sometimes you might even hear the femur pop into the, into the hips. And then let's change the direction of the circles. And you can make them as small or as big as you need to. You can go as slow or as fast as you need to. Really listen to your own body, make sure that nothing hurts. If anything hurts, you can always send me a message afterwards and we can find another, another variation for you to use. Something that will be safer. All right, and then let's slowly spiral back to the center. And we'll come to face the chair. Good. So we're just in front of the seat. So yeah, we've got the chair with the seat towards us, not the back of the chair. And the feet are still hip distance apart. And we'll do some chair salutes, which feel pretty good actually. <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy them as well. So press the feet down and find your Tadasana Mountain Pose. So simple awareness of what's going on in your feet regarding the weight and the sensation of the feet on the mat and starting to engage the muscles in the legs by lifting the kneecaps up and you know, tucking the tailbone slightly so it's tilting the pelvis back, lengthening the spine and relaxing the shoulders. And from here with this groundness in the feet we'll inhale and raise the hands up and as we exhale, we are bending forward and bringing the hands to the chair, coming into a forward fold with the hips very relaxing down. Okay. Just saw a message in the other group. I think someone was lost. So bring the head down. On the inhale, we push the hands down onto the seat, lengthening the spine, and we'll come to a plank pose here. So bring the feet back, sorry, to a downward facing dog first. So bring the feet back, press the hands into the chair and the head between the upper arms. So it's a very delicious version of the down dog, I find. You get a really nice stretch through the legs and a really nice stretch through the spine and opening of the shoulders of the chest. Breathe in and breathe out. One more breath in, one more breath out. On the next inhale, we'll come to a plank. So to do that, we're pushing the hands into the seat of the chair, coming onto the tippy toes here and sending the hips forward. So the arms are straight and we're trying to get the hips in line between our shoulders and our ankles. Inhale here. And as you exhale, let's drop the hips down into an upward facing dog or a cobra, sending the chest forwards and the shoulders back. Good. Activate through the legs, push through the toes. And on your next exhale, push into the hands to come back to your downward facing dog. And we'll do this little sequence a couple more times. So just take a long breath in. 
and a slow breath out. You can exhale through the mouth. Good. On your next inhale, we're coming back to plank. So pushing onto the toes, coming up onto your toes and pushing into the hands. Arms are strong. Hips in line between the shoulders and the ankles. Exhale and drop the hips down. Push the chest forward, the shoulders back. Maybe lift the gaze up, but not too much. And then push back to your down dog. We're moving really slowly and you can take several breaths in each postures. Just find what works for your body today. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, coming forward to your plank pose. Shoulders over the wrist and the left. Pulling the belly in, strong legs. And then drop the hips down into your Upward facing dog, shoulders back, chest pushing forward. And then push into the hands to your downward facing dog. Very good. All right. And let's stay in your down dog for a little bit here. Enjoying this lovely opening in the shoulders and in the chest. It's a very good one to do at the wall as well. You could have the hands higher on the wall and it's a very gentle shoulder opening it also stretches the legs it's really really good let's take two more breaths in down dog one more breath And then let's lift the head up, look forward and bring your feet next to, just in front of the chair. And then we'll come all the way back up. So let's be, we've been in inversion for a little bit here, just trying to not be too dizzy. Take your time, be very gentle, nice and slow. Shoulders relax and breathe here. Just close the eyes, notice how it feels, this little sequence. And we'll come to a forward fold now. So we'll stay in the position for a little while. So as you inhale, make sure your feet are still a bit distance apart, just in front of the seat of the chair. And then lift the arms up. And exhale, we fold over the chair. So this time we'll stay there. And you can bring your forehead to the chair. And you can do whatever you want with the arms. So you could stack the forearms together and rest the forehead on the forearm. You could also have some pillows if the chair is a little bit too low. Or you can hold on the seat or hold on the legs of the chair. And maybe adjust the position of the feet if you feel like they're too close or too far away. And then we'll just rest here for a moment. Lifting the hips up. Trying to find a gentle stretch to the back of the leg. And no pressure in the lower back, no tension, nothing painful again. If you don't have a chair here, you might just stay in a dangling position, just holding onto the opposite elbows, bending the knees slightly and letting the head fall. Or you could come to a seating version of the forward fold. I just bring the legs forward and folding over the legs. Just finding what works, what feels good. You really want to be able to relax in the posture. We'll stay here for another five long breaths. Letting go of any tension in the face. Sending the exhale 
wherever you need it. So you might, you feel, for example, a lot of tension in the back of the legs. On the inhale, you can send the inhale all the way to the muscles that you feel in the back of the legs. And on the exhale, trying to consciously release them, relax them, using the breath to relax a little more. Let's take one more breath here. And we will slowly come up. So again, taking our time, hands down onto the seat, bend the knees slightly and bring yourself all the way up. Good. We'll move to a chair version of Trikonasana. So you can bring your foot, left foot, woof, <laughs> just uh, under the chair. And the right foot will come to the back of the mat. So turning the right toes out and the left foot towards the front of your mat. Left toes towards the front of the mat. Good. From here we inhale and as we exhale we'll place the left hand on the, on the seat of the chair and turn the right shoulder back, lengthening the both sides of the torso. So you're sending the hips back, straightening this left leg and lengthening also the left side of your torso. Sending the crown of the head towards the top of your mat and the right hand can come up towards the ceiling. From here, lift the right hand up, push the left hand down and move the shoulders away from the ears. It's just a gentle version of our Trikonasana. We're going to stay here, not as long as the forward fold. Just finding some expansion in the chest, some length in the spine, some stretch in the legs, a bit of opening in the left hip. A lot going on here. And let's release. Let's bring the right hand down maybe to your hip, push yourself all the way back up and bring the right foot next to the left. Now let's do the other side. So the right foot under the seat of the, under the, no, <laughs> of the right chair, under the seat of the chair, turning the left toes out at the back of your mat, finding a nice wide stance with your legs, comfortable distance away from each other. So maybe, yeah, yeah, you, you choose, <laughs> you see what you need. Uh, a leg distance away maybe. And then bring the right hand down onto the chair, move the hips back, turn the chest towards the ceiling, left shoulders back, left shoulder back, and left hand up towards the ceiling. And you can gaze towards the left hand or towards the right hand. You can engage the arms here a little bit as well. So pulling the belly button towards the spine, reaching up. You're reaching in all direction actually. You're reaching your left hand up, your left foot down, your right foot down and forward and your right hand down. So you really feel the expansion of the body in all the directions. Let's take two more breaths. One more breath. And then carefully bring yourself all the way back to the front of your chair. Very good. Let's come onto our hands and knees. So we'll keep using the chair in a while, but for now we'll just move on to the mat. So hands and knees with the hands under the shoulders and the knees under the hips. On the inhale, let's lengthen the front of the body and find your cat-cow position. So a cow position with the chest forward and the hips back and exhale, rounding the spine. Chin to chest, tucking the tailbone down. Inhale, lengthening the front body, the shoulders back. And exhale, pushing the hands down, stretching the back. Inhale, curving. And exhale, rounding. Inhale, curving. 
exhale round. Two more, inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Good, coming back to center. Big toes together, hips back, and stretch the hands forward to your child's pose. So you might have the forehead on the mat or using a block under the forehead if you need some more support to reach the floor. And your arms are reaching actively forward so that you feel the opening in the shoulders, around the armpits. And you can have your knees really nice and wide apart here so that you get this opening in the hips as well. Letting the chest melt down towards the floor. Coming back to the breath. Just resting here. On the next inhale, slowly coming back up and you can bring the hands back towards the knees. Let's bring the knees closer together so that we can come into a shell stretch now. So we'll keep the forehead on the mat and the hands next to the knees, legs are together and we'll push the hands down and start to round the spine so the head is going to lift from the mat. The shoulders drop forward, the tailbone drops down, and you're pushing the middle part of your back towards the ceiling. Tuck the chin and really find your, this lovely stretch to the back muscles here. One more breath. And then just relax. You can come back up and sit onto your heels into a hero pose. So we're going to do this again and we can stay with the shell stretch with the variation we just did. Or we might take it into a hair pose. So for the hair pose, it's very similar, we, stay, we start exactly the same, but we keep the forehead down, or the, even the crown of the head down, and trying to touch the knees with the forehead. So it's a very, very deep flexion. And from here, so you can do the shell stretch, or you can grab onto your feet and lift the hips up so that you roll onto the crown of the head and find a bit of a different stretch than we just did. So keep rounding the spine as much as you can, separate the shoulder blades and stretch the back muscles. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. One more breath here. And then let's release the hips down and roll the spine to have the head coming all the way back up really slowly. And breathe, relax. Just stay here. Giving some time to the body to come back and to neutralize the stretch. So before we come on to our backs, I'd like to go back to do a bit more hips. So we'll come back up and this time we'll sit on the chair. 
So let's just sit on the chair and yeah, it doesn't matter if you sit on the edge of the seat or a little bit more towards the back. We'll place the right ankle onto the thigh here, flexing the right foot and bring the right knee towards the mat. So for now, you're not pushing down with the right hand, you're just encouraging here without touching it with your hand, just encouraging the knee to open. And you might just stay here. You might just stay here with the hand on the thigh and just take a moment here just to feel the shape. Notice what your right hip is telling you today. And if you feel like you want a little bit more intense stretch, you can start leaning forward onto your right leg. And maybe you're just staying here with the arms onto your right leg. Or maybe you come all the way down and relax the body on top of the leg. But be gentle, be mindful. It really depends on your right hip. So ask your body what it wants to do. Do not demand anything. And if you're going or even if you're not going far forward, trying to lift the chest, so bring the chest forward. So you've got a lot of length in the spine here. We'll take two more breaths. And if you've got some block that you want to place under the hands, actually, it can help if you are not quite reaching the floor. And then carefully bring yourself all the way back up. And bring the right foot back down. It's going to be quite intense, this one. Shake the legs. And then let's come to the other side. So make sure you're flexing the foot here. So you're pushing through the ball of the foot out and your toes are coming towards your knee. The left knee goes down, anchoring the right foot down. At first, we're just staying here. And one hip might be tighter than the other. So be aware of this and be gentle and compassionate with yourself. And then decide, decide if you want to stay here you want to come slightly forward. It's actually maybe better if you're quite deep on the seat so that you don't fall forward. You don't want to be rolling onto the mat. And then maybe keep the arms forward all the way down and keep sending the chest forward, lifting the chest. And you can drop the head. Maybe using the block under the hands for support. Just a few more breaths here. And last breath. And making your way all the way, all the way up. Carefully releasing the pose, shaking the legs, just noticing how it feels in the legs now that you're out of the pose. So maybe a bit of space around the hips. And then we'll come back up and all the way down to the mat. And we'll flip the legs through the chair, if you can do that, placing your legs under the chair. And we'll come to a supported fish. So we've done a bit of flexion and a bit of um, stretching the back of the body. So now we're going to stretch the front of the body with a block under the shoulder blades. So you'll just place it at the top of the back behind the shoulder blades. And your head will be resting on the mat. Your hips will be resting on the mat and your legs can be straight forward. 
So it might take a little bit of adjusting, making putting yourself into the pose and then checking if the block is too high or too low, checking that your hair is not in the way. Maybe you need some support for your head here as well if you feel like your chin is really going up and back. Maybe you want to place a cushion under the head. You want to be able to breathe and to relax into the pose, remember? So doing any adjustment that you want. Actually, my hair is good support for my head here. And when we are into this pose, we'll let the shoulders drop to the mat, opening the chest naturally. And the arms will come to the side in a Shavasana position, so a little bit away from the body, and the palms facing up. And here, we can just soften and let the body completely relax. If you don't have a block, by the way, you can use a little pillow here. You can roll a little pillow. I'm not going to suggest a dictionary for this one because it's probably really not comfortable. <laughs> so a pillow or a towel, even a, a jumper rolled into a little ball. Just anything that can elevate the chest here. So that we get this lovely opening, this lovely stretch to the pec muscles. Making sure your hips are evenly anchored on the mat. And that you're not holding tension anywhere in the body. So really check in with yourself. Notice if your fingers are tense, if your arms are tense. The legs, the abdomen, the hips. I was doing this posture the other day and just before the end of the posture, I realized I was clenching my left leg the whole time. I was just holding tension there randomly. So it's always good to, to keep a, an awareness in the entire body during this kind of position also helps to stay present, not think about dinner, all this kind of stuff. Let's take two more breaths. We'll roll to the side here. So moving all the way to the right, maybe, and just pull the block straight out of the way and come back to lay on your back. So no props at all, we're just lying on the mat. And allowing the spine to take back its natural shape, relaxing the chest, the shoulders, keep the eyes closed, just observe the effect of the pose on your body. Now from here we'll bend the knees and place the feet on the mat, comfortable distance away from the hips. And we'll do a bridge pose now. So you can play, take your block again and place it under the hips, maybe on the lowest height to start with. So place it just under the sacrum, this flat bone at the base of the spine, making sure that it's not in a place that hurts, that's uncomfortable. So find the, yeah, take the time to adjust and then let the hips sink onto the block release onto the block. The feet are parallel to each other, the knees are pointing up. And the arms can be again alongside the body, or you can have one hand on your heart, one hand on your abdomen, so that you can focus on the breath. 
Or you could have the arms overhead, maybe grabbing the opposite elbow and let the elbows fall down towards the mat so that you can get a little bit of an opening in the chest, uh, in the shoulders, sorry. In the chest as well. So very gentle inversion here. Just gradually going to increase the intensity of this inversion. So if you feel you're ready for more, you can now bring the block to the second height. So you've got this first height, the lowest height, and the second height, and the highest. So you want to place it to the second height, the length weight. And again, adjusting it so that it's really comfortable. And just take a moment here. Again, allowing the hips to sink down. We're starting to get a little bit more of a curve in the spine. Finding the shape that you want for your arms. Stay here for about another minute. the hips up and move the block to the side and let the hips come down you can stay here or bring the knees towards the chest give yourself a hug maybe sway from side to side and we'll come to our last inversion last but not least so you might want to bring the hips closer to the chair here so that they're really just under the chair and then move the legs to rest on the seat of the chair. And then relax it down. So you got your shins, your calves resting on the seat of the chair. And I'm going to give you quite a few options here. So the first option is to stay here with the hips on the mat, the legs on the chair. Second option will be to add the block under the hips on the first or second height. For me, I love on the second height, but for some it might be a little too intense because now we've got the legs up. So you can choose, you try and you choose what you what you prefer. Right, so I'm gonna have to move back a little bit because of the block. Good, so I can rest my feet all the way to the back of the chair. And then your knees can be together or they can fall apart into kind of a Badakonasana shape. Your feet are together and the knees to the side. So that's optional as well. So notice what feels good, what you want to practice today. And once you find the shape, try to relax into it. And again, the arms can be wherever you want them to be. making sure there's no compression to the lower back no discomfort in the pose at all if there is adjust you want to be able to fully relax into this So 
allowing all the muscles in the face to soften, the hips to be completely supported either by the mat or by the block. There's no effort to keep the legs up or together as well. You can find a, a way to, to be able to release all the muscles in the legs, letting them be supported by the chair. And then relax the abdomen. Just enjoy this lovely inversion. So if you're feeling really comfortable here, and I hope you do, you can stay here for your Shavasana. That could be your Shavasana today. I encourage you to stay longer into this inversion if you, if you really feel good in there. If you prefer a more traditional Shavasana, then we'll come out of the pose very gently, very mindfully. So if you want to come out, Gently bring the knees together if they were apart. And then carefully bring your feet to the floor one by one. And lift the hips up and move the block to the side. Give yourself a moment here to rest the hips down. And feel the shape of the spine coming back to normal blood flow coming back to the feet maybe bring the knees to the chest if that feels good stretching the lower back do a the back bend as well if you had the block and maybe dropping the knees to the right to give yourself a twist keeping both shoulders down and then the knees up and all the way to the left. And then bring the knees back up and you can actually stretch the legs to either side of the chair or have the legs between the feet of the chair as you prefer. As feels more comfortable or even moving the chair away. Now let's try to do as little effort as possible before we get into our Shavasana. Letting the legs relax wherever you are, the arms relax, the face relax. And just breathe and stay for a few more minutes here.
So you're feeling your Shavasana, just stay where you are. But if you're still in your inversion, we're going to start to come out of the pose. I bring the knees together and carefully placing the feet back onto the floor. Lifting the hips and moving the block, see if it wasn't, if it was still there. And resting your hips down and taking a moment here. Maybe drawing the knees to the chest. And swaying from side to side to massage your lower back. If you're in Shavasana, you can start to move the fingers and toes, moving the wrists and the ankles, swing the head from side to side. We're all starting to just stretch and move a little bit, a little bit more, bigger movements. Bring the arms overhead, give yourself a full stretch. Pointing the toes, flexing the toes. And then let's relax and bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a really big hug here. And let yourself roll to one side. Coming onto a, a fetal position. You can use your lower arm as a pillow and take some time here. And when you are ready to come up, use your top hand to press yourself up into a seating position. Any comfortable seating position. Keeping the eyes closed and the spine long, relaxing the arms and the hands onto your knees. Taking a moment to notice how you feel at the end of this class. And to give yourself thanks for practicing today. taking care of yourself on the next inhale let's draw the arms up towards the ceiling and exhale bring your palms in front of the chest in a gesture of gratitude let's bow the head towards the hands and open the eyes namaste thank you very much for practicing with me tonight i hope it felt really good uh, yeah, thank you. Have a lovely evening.